helping you navigate the rocky path of fulfilling employment. Here's our career Sherpa, Julie Bauke. She is, by all measures, a Cincinnati treasure. She is someone who I think a lot of people look and go, that, that right there, that is the face, the voice of Cincinnati. I'm talking, of course, about Cherie Palello. Cherie Palello is going to be, uh, she's, she's uh, engaged to be married to Mark, uh, Mike Dardis. Uh, and Mike better be good. Mike, Mike better not mess this up. I'm telling you what, there's a lot of pressure on this guy. Uh, Mike Dart is, of course, her co-anchor, and they make a great team over on Channel 5. And uh, as you may or may not know, they are engaged to be married. They're both uh, divorced, and uh, they both have decided that the love is right next to them in the anchor chair there, which is a, it's a great, uplifting story. However, as we approach Valentine's Day tomorrow, here's a question for uh, Julie Balke. Are they screwing things up at work there? Is this going to end in a disaster, Julie Balke? Well, you know what? Considering they got to pretty much be engaged without <laughs> anybody knowing about it, seems like they're doing it pretty well. Well, I don't know if anyone knew. I mean, well, a lot of people kind of knew about it, but like, but but yeah. I, and if you get the blessings of management, see, here's think, what's right? interesting about the situation heading into Valentine's Day, right? Is that um, I better bosses are going, oh man, if, if something goes south here and this doesn't work out, then we got real problems here because now you've got animosity and, and what you know, yeah. you got real problems. On the other hand. This is going to be great for ratings in the short term. And we in the broadcast industry, much like probably other businesses, too, we live second to second. We don't think quarters <laughs> or years ahead. No, we think about tomorrow's show. You're only as good as your last show, and you're only as good as what tomorrow's show is going to bring. So they don't care about what's going to happen in the next six months or two years. They care what's going to happen tomorrow, and this is good for ratings. So you're thinking that WLWT is planning like a reality show based on their wedding? Possibly. They may do it live on the air, like when Paul Dixon married chickens <laughs> right back in the Dixon, day. Yeah. Uh, oh, something along yeah. those lines. So Yeah. Uh, yeah. They're yeah, no arbor chickens. They're good people, no. Mike Dardis and my dear friend Cherie Palello. And yeah. I'm sure they're going to live in, in wedded bliss for the rest of their lives on this earth. Yeah. And they deserve that because they're they good folks. You know what? They're such clearly such professionals. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the key, is we sometimes, when it comes to crushes, romance, love, we lose our, we lose our head, mm -hmm. but then we lose our professionalism, and we think we're being so cool at work when we're so in love with someone or right. when we break up uh, right. that no one notices and that it doesn't affect our work, and it does about 99% of the time, and um, we, we don't even know it because we've... Um, you know, uh, cooler heads are not prevailing. And, um, you know, we've all been in workplaces where we've ever been in something like that. We've seen it, and they think they're being so cool. Mm -hmm. um, it's just there's a million ways it can go wrong, but there's no way to stop it. The heart wants what the heart wants, Julie Balky. Exactly. You know what I'm exactly. talking about. I do know that. Yeah, uh, and it doesn't have to make sense, and you're responsible, grown adults that know all the implications and all the pitfalls, and you still do it anyway. And I guess that's what makes it cool about being in love, right, is you normally do stuff you don't do. You have a certain feeling about the other person, that you love them tremendously, and, and you know, that's more important than a job or career or whatever. I think that's, you know, that that's an, an innately human, right? Um, but in that case, what advice, going into Valentine's Day, dating coworkers, go. So, yeah, so, so first of all, there's some no's. There's some no-nevers. Um, if you're married involved in a serious relationship yeah. and the other person is or the other person is that's a big fat no we've all been at work where people are having an affair and everybody knows it they Correct. think they're being so cool so that that's a big no dating your boss is also a big no although i was reading some stats that said that like 20 20 some percent of people said they have dated their boss which is amazing to me. I didn't expect the number to be that high, but to me, that's also a no. Because it, you've got... you got quid pro know, quo there, right? you got something for something. Right, that's yeah, a, exactly. And, yeah. and especially if you're the person who is, um, who's not the boss, uh, anything that yeah. you do well is going to be overshadowed by, oh, yeah, well, we know why he or she right, got that assignment. Right. Um, or did you see the way they look at each other or blah? Every time the doors close, yeah. they assume you're in there making out or worse. And so there's just all kinds of stuff that goes on that really undermines your career. And, well, yeah, I know so people who are in management positions that wound up getting married to someone, and yeah. it turns out they actually yeah. were getting special special treatment. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, and if you're going to, if you say, if you, if you and your, your boss are like, yep, this is the real deal, it really is in your best interest for one of you to move on and start doing that before it hits the fan and right. then it becomes a real issue at work. And we all like to think, oh, this is special. 
this, you know, this isn't going to turn out that way. And it doesn't sometimes because of your ability to separate your work from your romantic life and it. to understand the implications not only on your career but on everybody around you and to handle it in a way that, you know, you're not a hormonal teenager at work. Um, Julie Balke, our career sherp on the show on 700 WLW, talking about with Valentine's Day tomorrow, uh, trysts and romance and engagements and marriages in the workplace. Now, let's face it, uh, for most of us, uh, we spend as much time, if not more time, with coworkers than we do our spouses uh, or our loved yeah. ones. And that's sure. why love blossoms in the workplace, right? It does. Yeah, it does. And it, so it's, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's normal. You, know, like you, you need said, to work less. That's the point. Quit working so damn much. Yeah, exactly. But you got to, I mean, it's, if things are, and so what happens um, a lot of times is we aren't happy with our lives outside of work. It could be our relationship outside of work, our marriage outside of work. It right. could just be our life in general. And we're looking for some sort of excitement. Um, we're looking for something to distract us, something to, so we don't have to do the hard work of figuring out what's, why we hate our jobs or why we hate our lives or spouses or whatever. And so the easy thing is, uh, you know, a little, uh, a little romance at work. Um, now we've got, okay, so think about this. We've got people texting naked pictures of themselves to each other. Is that happening in the workplace? You bet. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just teenagers who are doing that. It's fully grown adults. Mm. Uh, who are who are doing that, and we'd like to think that um, if we do that to our beloved at work, that uh, first of all, you're probably on a work phone, depending on what kind of job you're in. You're on a work phone, and you're either sending yeah. or receiving naked pictures. You will be fired for that, and you should be. Um, companies have l very low tolerance for that sort of stuff. What about on your own your personal companies. private cell phone? Well, you know what, if you're doing that, okay, all right, so let's say it does, it's not a company phone, and someone texts you a naked picture, and, um, you know, you, you, as the person who did that, let's say it goes south. You are risking the person that you sent it to showing it to others. This is not just a junior high or high school issue. And it's just, I mean, it just it makes me crazy the way that people cannot separate their work lives from their home lives and behave appropriately. But if you're not behaving appropriately in your personal life, you're probably not going to behave appropriately at work. And so it's not no like question. there's two, two of us or the same person, and we generally bring our bad decisions and bad behavior to every place we show up. Right. Julie Bauke. So Julie Bauke. No, okay, quit, quit, quit having sex. Julie Bauke is on the show on 700 WW, our career sure, but tomorrow, Valentine's Day, we're talking about relationships in the workplace. And, and another element to this thing, too, I don't know if you saw this or not, Julie, but there are some workplaces out there that are asking their workers not to receive Valentine's Day presents at work because they find it disruptive, distracting, and polarizing because... Uh, I, I think I think there's some audacity there that you can't take a personal delivery at work. But uh, that let's say that I send my wife flowers at work. Well, she gets flowers, and the other women there oh, may not get flowers, on. and so they get upset with her. They go complain to the boss and say she got flowers and I didn't. And everyone and and and, and she you, because I'm not getting flowers, you shouldn't be allowed to have flowers. You pardon the technical terms here, but that's a load of crap. <laughs> um, uh, come on. Well, what are you supposed to do if you're a boss and something like that? You go, well, no, no, it's not my no. it's not my fault, Sally. It's not my fault you're undesirable. <laughs> Is that yeah, what you're supposed you to go. say? There you go. All right, I fixed it. The opposite of that. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. I mean, if you, you know, if men you, don't find you all, attractive, Jane. I'm sorry. Yeah. If just because somebody, first of all, just because somebody gets flowers at work doesn't mean their spouse loves them or they have any better relationship or life than you do. It's flowers. There Jesus. are, I know, so many wonderful men out there who do not send flowers, but uh -huh. they do wonderful things the rest of the year. Right. And so if you can't handle the fact that your coworkers, this is the tail wagging the dog, right? If, you, if one person can't follow the dress code, it's the age in which we live. It for everybody. Right, right, I, exactly. I have, not heard, I have not heard or seen that. I am not but getting I'm, flowers or candy at work or a big stuffed teddy bear um, therefore, you shouldn't get it either because you're hurting my feeling. You're making me feel inadequate compared to the love that you have. Jesus. I have not. I, you know what? I have not heard that before, but that gets one big eye roll from me. Um, it, I'll tell you what. If, if, you, if you're in a workplace where you have to have a policy like that, you are a weenie as a leader. Yeah, you're a weenie. 
Yeah. Scott Reinhardt, our boss, just came up with that policy. I, did, did you hear that from Jill? You're a wiener, Reinhardt. He didn't. A we, he, didn't want, he knows none of you are going to be weenie. getting flowers. Or no, we're not getting anyway, anything. So nothing at all. Not lovable. You're not Can't lovable remember the last time I got something like that ever. Yeah. That's <laughs> fine. I get it. I get send me bacon if you want to send me stuff. Exactly. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Right. Julie Bauke, our career that. Sherpa, and of course, uh, careeraccelerated.com does the uh, first Tuesday every month. Does her, 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 her. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. See ya.